uh, when I was the basketball coach at Stephen F. Austin, um, I'm going to blame Derek Burson for me having to see you guys again. I mean, this is a brutal schedule. I just saw, I see you guys more than I see my wife, way more than I see my daughters. Uh, knowing that, that, that literally some of you guys aren't that good looking. Um, no offense. Um, what, what was it? Eight hours ago. But um, hell, here we go. Um, really proud of our freshmen. Uh, last night, I thought that uh, on a senior night, it was it was it was very nice to see two freshmen um, really play well, kind of come out of a shell, uh, so to speak. Uh, I think we 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 see that uh, those guys can be alphas, uh, they can be Batman, and uh, you know, in a year where a lot of them have been in supportive roles or 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 Robin, you know, uh, it's it's been. Uh, it was really nice to see that. I thought Kofi uh, was 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 exceptional in the second half. Um, I, I thought Trent's job defensively was was outstanding. Uh, and then, um, to be to be quite honest, we had some of the best possessions we've had in a long time in terms of ball movement, driving it, kicking it, and and um, you know, and going back and evaluating it to. to only make four threes and and we had so many good shots and um, and to still score 86 and to know that Io wasn't in that lineup when we did that uh, I was I was I was very pleased with last night's performance obviously a very quick turn we're gonna go uh, uh, probably see a team that's a little bit uh, the opposite of what we just saw in terms of of, of having the screws tightened down a little bit, uh, a team that uh, you know beat Northwestern uh, in their last game. They've been off a week, um, and um, so you know they'll they'll be well prepared and, and well rested. So um, you know it'll be uh, at least we have some familiarity with them and their personnel and what they're trying to do, and uh, we've got we've got to be better in some areas. Uh, defensively against them, uh, and and hopefully uh, we cannot turn it over. They're number one in the country, and the fewest turnovers at nine, and we had eighteen against them in the first uh, in the first game, and, and we cannot we cannot do that on the road and expect to win. So, um, you know, before I get asked, you know, Io's Io's situation is con is is no different than it was last night. So, um, you know, there's there's no need to continue to to beat that up, uh, but uh, we'll uh, always do what's in the best interest of that young man and, and, and his, his career and, and our team. And again, we've got, a, we've got another great challenge and we'll have to step up to that at uh, one o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Brad, I think we're all pretty surprised to see you as well. Uh, sincerely, do, would we be here if you were not a top five team? Would we have this interaction this morning, do you think? I, yeah, I don't know why we wouldn't. Um, you know, I mean, I think there's, I think it's, I, I it, Rob, I think there's, there's, there's certain ways to handle things. And, and uh, we're a member of the Big Ten Conference. It's the best conference in basketball. Uh, it's a one off year. Um, would it be very easy for us to not play this game? This, these games mean nothing. There's no, there's no Big Ten championship that means much. These games don't mean much. Uh, they really don't. Uh, and, uh, and yet we're part of something that's much bigger. Uh, you guys know, uh, I try to be all about character. Uh, the league's provided these games for us. I, uh, it's unfortunate because as I mentioned last night, we've done everything COVID correctly to this point. And uh, it's unfortunate that we lost three road games. It's unfortunate we set for 10 days. It's unfortunate we set for another period of six days and didn't play. And now we end the season with all these road games crammed in here. Um, be very easy to, to say, hey, we're, we're a fifth ranked team in the country and let's, we're not gonna play. Uh, you know what? 
Um, I think there's a lot of life lessons in this that go beyond. Um, I, the, the, this game, the next game, whatever. Uh, certain programs were on their do their do do what they do. I don't care about that. Uh, but um, the Big Ten scheduled these games. We're a member of the Big Ten, and uh, we're going to show up and play. And did you get any sleep last night? I was actually exhausted last night. I was I was in out by by uh, midnight, and uh, uh, I was. I got a text at 2.30 in the morning that some of our coaches had sent with the final grades. I, I had the phone by me. I woke up, saw who it was, went right back to sleep. I woke up at 5.30. I'm on my uh, second Yeti of coffee. And uh, I've watched Northwestern and Iowa and, and our game. And now we'll get ready for uh, preparation. So I got, right, five and a half, I got five and a half hours of sleep, Rob. Thank you. Woohoo! Thanks. Hey, Coach, is there anything different you'll do with the guys as far as um, what a normal lead-up to a game would be as far as trying to keep them fresh? Yeah, yeah. Um, there's no doubt. I, you know, we, we usually don't hold back too much. I mean, we go, and uh, uh, we're, we're a lot more sensitive to that. Uh, you know, I do have experience with one-day preps. We had them in the Big 12. We haven't had, you know, five games in seven days, and the uniqueness of – this one day prep is our opponent doesn't, you know, they have seven days. So, um, but uh, yeah, we, we can't do much, you know, we'll, this will be a more of a mental, uh, again, it's an NCAA tournament like deal. You're, you're going to have to, uh, we're going to break a sweat. We're going to lift, we're going to go, you know, and, and, and shoot a bunch of balls and, and then we're going to, uh, we're going to cover them, but it won't be uh, up and down the court. So it'll be, it'll be, it'll be very controlled and not near as long. And do you guys plan to have Io make the trip with you up to Madison? To be determined, yep. Thanks. Doctor, the, the final doctors will do, the doctors will determine that. Uh, that's where he's at today. Hey, Brad, on Wednesday, you had said that you and Io hadn't talked about future plans, but you said that he needs to go to the draft. When he came out yesterday, he was announced as making his last appearance at the State Farm Center. I'm just wondering if since then you two had had a conversation or if uh, – if there was anything yeah. extra to that, yeah. just just not. He's got he's got a lot of things going, Nico. I mean, it's not where uh, that you know. There's there's a there's a right time. We knew that uh, last night was going to be his last night in the arena. I mean, that's that. To be very honest, that's common sense. And uh, um, to sit down and formally have that, we did not. Uh, there's a, there's a lot. Yesterday was a on a lot of fronts was a challenging day. So uh, we, that, but that, that discussion will happen, but uh, not right at the moment. Kind of following up on that. I mean, I know you're in game mode throughout that, but did you have a moment where you maybe looked over and just saw him on the bench and were able to kind of, you know, realize just, you know, that it kind of just sucked that he wasn't able to, to take part in that game last night. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, senior day stink, guys. I mean, I, I'm telling you, and I, you know, I'm I'm emotional, and 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 you, you get so invested in, in people's lives and and their and their families, and and um, you see them grow, and you see them. You guys have all seen that with Trent Demonte, and uh, it's the same thing with Io. And uh, man, it, it it was it was it was sad. I, you know, I it's the first time that I've experienced as a head coach. Uh, a player not being able to play in his last home game, and it had a different. It had a different feel. It was, it was eerie, and and it was it wasn't right. And but it it it, it was it was eerie. So, but uh, I say this all the time. I'm the most blessed human being on the planet because I got to coach that kid for three years, and 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 we've got we've got more to do. Thanks, Brad. Hey, Nico, I actually just asked my question, so I'm good. Thanks. Hey, Brad, you talked uh, a little bit about the, the freshmen yesterday, and uh, were you surprised how well they played? I mean, they really played aggressive, and, and can you maybe expand on, on how both uh, Curbelo and, and especially Adam attacking the basket was a little bit uh, – was a real positive yesterday? Well, again, it, it was it was tweaking roles, you know, and it was, you know, 
it was it was putting guys in position to to have to go make plays um you know and, and a lot of that you know you can't have five guys on the court who all go make plays you've got to have other guys who who, who do certain things you know uh, you know, the Lakers have LeBron go make a lot of plays and the other guys are recipients and they all can't do, you all can't do that and be successful. And, and yet it's very nice when you had to step up. <clears throat> and a great example last year, it was very tough at Rutgers last year without IO. We didn't have a lot of guys able to do that. Um, and um, it's not easy being an alpha. And, and both of those freshmen stepped into the roles and, and, and were, were, were very good and very successful. And, um, you know, I thought Curbelo controlled the game. You know, we made, we, we make any threes, he's got an easy triple double. And, uh, so, you know, and then Adam to, to get going offensively, we know he's an offensive talent and, and, uh, you know, he can show that there's a lot more than just a catch and shoot guy. Thank you. Good morning, Coach. You said last night that you're eventually hoping to get Adam involved in a lot of the things that you've done with Io over the last couple of years. After what he showed last night with his ability to attack the rim, I get and really scored at all three levels. How much more of an asset can that be for you coming down the stretch in March? Yeah, I, I you know, I think it's it's a um, it, it's one of those situations where this is a great example of not having the off season. In, in terms of, of or the preseason, uh, where you you've got games that you can tinker with that and experiment with those with those things, um, you know when you get into conference play and it's 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 the nuts and bolts and you're doing what you do and you're you're putting your best guys in your best spots and the guys that have been there and done that and and um, you know that's been it's been Iowa it's been Kofi it's been Trent and uh, you you let those freshmen mature and grow along the way and 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 yet we see it in practice uh so i i'm, I'm excited I, I think it can be a big help i think it gives us uh gave him a lot of confidence it gives me a lot of confidence that we can uh uh you know we've we've got a lot of different things we can go to and feel comfortable about you mentioned your confidence in him and the things that you can go and do with him how much more do you think having this ability to kind of sit back and mature and watch an aisle watch a trend during his freshman year could help him into the future in his sophomore, junior, potentially, I guess, even senior year, if he's here for that long. Yeah, it's huge. There's, there's no, um, you know, it, it's the saying you guys have heard me say a million times, the best thing about freshmen is they become sophomores and, and, and now they know a system and they know, uh, and they know the expectations and, and, you know, the hardest, the hardest thing to do in, in coming from high school to college is not play offense. The hardest thing to do is play defense and, and learn the importance of that and learn how to do it. And then when you do that defensively, that helps your offense. And because it frees your mind up so much and, and we can all draw, you guys could all draw up a set and we could go out and run it and execute it and score. And you, you guys would think you're a great coach. You know, that doesn't, ha that doesn't have anything to do with, with offensive basketball. It's what you do on the defensive side and the transition and the freedom mentally uh, to be able to play offense. And so, uh, man, he's going to have a great career. Thank you, Coach. Hey, Brad, last night and, and then again today, you talked about maybe some sleepless nights. And I'm just curious for you, I think there's probably always a level of mental fatigue or exhaust at this point of the season. But with everything, the schedule and, you know, the situation with Io, and I know you've been vocal about Kofi, and, and then you put COVID on top of that, what is this like for you right now? I mean, it's it's one of those that uh, I tell our guys, you know, sometimes it's it's not always fair. Sometimes it's not always easy. But the one thing that's the one thing that's constant is we're playing basketball. We're doing the one thing we love uh, and we have to be as prepared and as dialed in every single night. We're blessed. We get to put the jersey on and um, we cannot make an excuse. That's um, um, sure. You know, I think everybody gets tired. I think everybody gets worn down. I think it's, it's, it's a natural phenomenon. It happens. Um, but, um, this year is added. We're going to grow from it. We're going to be better from it. Um, five of six on the road stinks. Uh, it's insane in any, in any normal year. Um, and, um, 
But um, you know what? We've played better on the road. We've played better basketball on the road than we've played at home. So um, bring it on. Do you find yourself, I mean, have you been in a situation where you have to maybe remind yourself that like, you are kind of the head guy, you are the head guy of this team and that your attitude and approach trickles down, I mean, you know, kind of maybe falls to your guys to keep that level head? Has that been something you've experienced? Yeah, I appreciate you letting me know that. Well, um, so. <laughs> maybe I'm tired. I forget things. I don't know. Maybe they, I don't know. Um, no, absolutely. That's part of leadership. That's part of that's part of, um, um, of 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 having the title is is you know you juggle a lot of hats, and yet um, you know I I understand everything that um, I do. There's a reaction to. There was no doubt. You know I had a plan with the officials early last night. I mean there's 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 going to be a um, um, uh, a trickle down so to speak, and it always starts at the top, and it starts with. It, it starts with me now that you inform me I'm the head coach. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm conscious of that. Thanks, Brad. I thought I'd break a little news to you this morning. I appreciate it. I, I mean, Rob's concerned about my health and I got Joey informing me. I'm now the head coach at Illinois. It's a, it's a been, it's been a great morning. Well, I'm not sure how I'm going to follow that up, but uh, I guess you know, with IO's status, undetermined I suppose just do you kind of maybe feel like the team can avoid maybe that start last night where that's just a little maybe hit and miss because they, they kind of they know those roles if he's not out there or out there in a limited amount yeah common sense was last night I I mean it it, it, it was different okay it was just different and so sometimes when you get different you get just a little bit out of sync and out of rhythm and out of and yet we had some incredible possessions. I mean, incredible, like, and, and there was no reward at the end because we didn't score. And yet I was ecstatic by our ball movement and our, and our flow and our driving and our, and, and, it, and the ball never stuck. And, and yet, and then we would miss, we missed a three and, you know, it, it, it's just kind of that little bit of uh, uncertainty. I thought we played better um in, in um, the second half in terms of understanding where shots were coming so on and so forth but uh yeah that was just common uh common sense thing that I knew we'd be out of sorts a little bit Scott and we were um you know we'll be through that pretty quick uh, you mentioned with you know Bello probably deserving a you know, triple double if just a couple more shots fall I mean that would have been three and two and a half weeks after two in the program and I don't know, like 70, 80 years. Just is there something about this group where those are like now maybe I don't want to say common, but certainly almost happening at a regular clip. Yeah. Let's not call them common. It's really hard to do that in a college basketball game. And, uh, you know, especially for guards to, to have to go rebound, you know, Carvello is an elite rebounder. I mean, I saw a game in high school. He had 19 um, at a high level game, high, high level game. Uh, you know, he's got a knack for that. And, uh, but, uh, you know, yeah, I, I think we're an unselfish group. I think we're, we're a team that has, has guys who can make plays offensively. I think that's why we're, a, you know, we're, a, I don't know, seventh, eighth, ninth, whatever we are in offensive efficiency. You have that when you you can pass and you have that when you guys got, she got shot makers and, uh, uh, you know, the rebounding is a knack. It's a, it's a toughness and, and, uh, um, you know, that's, uh, that's pretty special. Hey, Brad, uh, I, I can read between the lines that, that you're frustrated, uh, with the big 10 with certain things. So I'll just ask you point blank, like, what is your biggest frustration there? Oh, I mean, I, I, there, it is what it is. I, I think, you know, and it's a bad line. I can't believe I just used that. Um, um, it's, it's, if I have any frustration, we were perfectly healthy and set for 10 days in the middle of, in the middle of the season. And, and I know it goes beyond us. And my whole deal is I know how hard I have preached. I know how committed our players have been 
to doing everything perfect with COVID. These guys have not done one thing outside of the, the 30 people that are everyday testing. And to, um, we're gonna do what the league tells us because we think that's right. And the Big Ten is the, is, is, is the league that we're all playing in. Um, and it's unfortunate that the three games we got canceled we're, we're all road games and it's not our fault. And, and, but um, I'm going to be bigger than that. I, I want to, I want my players to learn some, a life lesson, not just a, not just a single game moment, you know, Hey, we're going to cancel this game because we don't feel like playing. And, and that could be very easily done in COVID. Okay, because the Big Ten championship means nothing. They're going to go to some numeric formula. And all we're trying to do is get to the end and get to the NCAA tournament. Because I think the final chapter of, of COVID, of a COVID season, is having the NCAA tournament. And I want to be there in the best way we can uh, and the healthiest we can. And, um, you know, so it, it, but it is, you know, stuff looks really good, Jeremy, on paper until you have to live it sometimes. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, we can, we can talk about all the mental issues that we've been through this year and the mental challenges. Um, you know, sometimes mental issues don't coincide with schedules, you know, or somebody's schedule, whatever it is, you know, but, but my point being, uh, we're, we're a member of the big 10. It's the best league in the country. And they've asked us to play games, and uh, we're going to play games. Thanks, Brad. Hey, Brad, not glossing over this special season or this special group, but did last night give you a glimpse of what you have in the future with Bello and with Adam? Because uh, it obviously looks pretty bright, even without, you know, Io on the floor. Good observation. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I, it's exciting. I, You know, I, I think that, you know, when you when you've got a, a really good coaching staff, um, you know, you guys that have been, all been here forever. Lauren's been here for a hundred years. Uh, man, we, our guys have done a good job of recruiting and putting good players that fit into what we're into what we do, and um, uh, it's changed a lot in four years. And so I'm I'm always excited, and I always love to see young guys grow. And, and this group has done that. Thanks, Brad. Hey, Brad, kind of combining Scott and Mark's question, but do you think next year with, you know, maybe more touches and more minutes that Andre could be like a nightly triple-double threat? Come on now. There's been two in how many years? I, you know, I mean, I, I don't want to put limitations on somebody, but, um, I, you know, he does a lot of things very well and he's great at being an alpha and he loves, he loves that. He loves those moments. And, uh, you know, so I'm not going to put a limit on him, but you know, I'm also, come on, those are, you know, there was two and I don't know, Lauren, how you, Lauren, how many have you seen? You've seen now four, two, four, whatever. Okay. You know, Lauren's old as dirt. I mean, he's, he, he's, he hadn't seen many. So, to say you can do that every night is a little much. And then uh, as Mark sort of approaches and you guys are kind of in the mix, are you paying any attention to maybe teams that are kind of on your projected seed line or bracketology or anything like that? Or is that for the guys like me? Um, probably start doing that in the next week to 10 days, week, week or so. It's a little early for that yet. Um, but, um, you know, the way it's worked in the past, our, our guys through analytics, um, and we got a bunch of them that are really good at, we'll start looking at all those numbers. They'll start pulling folders. Um, when that time comes, I'll get a folder within 30 seconds knowing who we're playing because they'll have it figured out. Thanks, Brad. All right. We've got to wrap up. Um, thank you for joining us and we'll quick, have quick note, Derek. Quick note, yeah. uh, 
I'm old as dirt. Uh, Jim Turpin joined me today at 89, and anybody that might know him, including uh, Brad, you might want to send him a message. He'll be 89 today. Jim Happy Turpin. Happy birthday, Jim. He was play-by-play hey. -play for uh, over 30 years. For the Absol Army. Absolutely. Make make sure you give him our best well wishes. And uh, no no offense, Lauren, I respect you, but you are old as dirt. You look great, though. <laughs> All righty. Thank you.